Good evening, friends uh, and patrons. Uh, Change Agents Foundation. I'm the founder of Change Agents Foundation. It's an online forum uh, for building awareness around health, wealth, career, and uh, relationships, what we call the uh, wheel of life. Uh, in the first series, we had uh, uh, a bunch of uh, speakers uh, uh, picked from different varied sectors talking about uh, uh, careers, health. We had uh, plenty of doctors talking about health and wealth relationships. We had different speakers in those areas. And now in, this, in the second series, uh, we started uh, interviewing or interacting with social stalwarts. Uh, social stalwarts are people who are doing a phenomenal job uh, in the social sector. Uh, it, is, it is a tribute to them. It is to recognize and to celebrate the people behind uh, such social organizations, what is primarily called the NGOs, uh, which is, in my opinion, is another pillar in the nature, nation's growth. So today, uh, we have a very special person, the CEO of the Education Society, which is Pardada, Pardadi Education Society. A small introduction about uh, Pardada before I go into it. If you educate a woman, you educate a family. If you educate a girl, you educate the future. This is said by Queen Rani of Jordan. So this sets the context for the next one hour conversation with uh, Renika Gupta. Renika is part of Pardada Pardadi family from the past two decades. She's very compassionate about the causes of underserved. She has been involved in the social sector for almost four decades. And during this period, she has been associated with causes like gender, rural development, child rights, education, and fair trade. She has been a part of many international charities. Her efforts and work in the social sector has been recognized by many, recognized many times. She has received many awards for her work nationally and internationally. Some of the publications include Patri Politics with Hindu Prakash Singh 1990, Indian Woman, The Captured Beings, New Delhi, Intellectual Publishing House published it, and Dowry, How Many More Deaths to Its End. That's another publishing from her, her, to her kitty. And uh, Indian Woman, The Power Trap, New Delhi, Galaxy. So, so I'm very glad and I'm so happy and privileged on, on behalf of Change Agents Foundation to invite uh, Ms. Renuka Gupta, the CEO of Pardada Pardadi Education Society. Very good evening, ma'am. Good evening to good evening. everybody and Namaskar and uh, thank you for uh, being part of this whole thing, on, especially on a Sunday evening. I know it's a family time. And thanks to you because uh, it's because of you that I will be able to connect with so many people who are going to spare their time today to listen to whatever we are going to share. Thank you once again. Yeah, you, uh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. So uh, to start with, I'm going to ask you a few questions. I'm not going to uh, make much noise. I will allow you to uh, now raise your voice because that is what is more important today. And uh, I'll have a few questions for you only to give a structure to this program. Uh, Coming to Pardada Pardadi, uh, it's, it's a very magical word. Tell us the story behind the name first. Okay. First, it's a tongue twister. I would like everybody to pronounce Pardada Pardadi with me. I know <laughs> that uh, it's really a tongue twister. And some of you definitely know the meaning. And some of you may know the meaning. But what why we decided to keep it as Pardada Pardadi was because Pardada Pardadi is about your roots. It's about great grandparents. And what are great grandparents? They're all our roots. So we as an organization believe that anybody who's rooted, who has strong roots, can only develop. And who has connects with the roots, who can owe up to say that, yes, my grandmother was X, and it is because of her that I am who I am today. Or my great grandparents were this, and I'm connected to this because of them. That's why we said Padada Padada. And another thing was that nowadays when you ask anybody about their education, so you talk about, oh, how many marks did you get in class 12? Or what was your percentage? Or which college did you pass out from? What is your family yeah. package? So education these days is all about this. But India has a great history of being the best education system it had. Where we were talking about citizenship. We were talking about Guru Shishya Parampara. Nobody asked you for your grades. Nobody asked you for salary packages. So in Pardada Pardade, we are also trying to create that citizenship. We are trying to create that leadership 
or seat of leadership in girls so that they become mm. the change agent and it becomes overall a beautiful world correct that's why this name pardada all right pardade. okay okay so pardada pardade for me uh, it's a calling uh, uh, i i'm sure the founder of this organization has been in the helm of affairs now heading organization been in the uh, at the top level you know he was at the top ranks of being an md ma- managing director of a, a top notch organization i would call pardada pardadi is a calling for him it's it's a it's a divine purpose it's a high end purpose for him so how it all began uh, could you take us to the roots of pardada pardadi again yes so founder of pardada pardadi is lovingly known as sam virendra singh who i call is 80 years young <laughs> it was his dream and passion to start this organization he took voluntary retirement from dupont as a south asia head so uh, i wish he was here to narrate the story he always tells me renuka when i joined dupont in america in 1962 when i went to the cafeteria it was segregated and i did not know which side did i belong to and slowly and gradually when he uh, went up to the management position he said he started dreading the thought of going to the management meetings because there would be always two minute silence in the meeting to say okay let's have two minute silence for sam's country and sam said at the age of 50 i started thinking i must find answers to the question and only one question if indians can do so well why not india so that was his quest and that is what made him come back to his own village which he had left 40 years ago when he was oh. 22 years and as the luck would be i have been in this sector i feel always very grateful for uh, me being in this sector i don't think i could have done anything else so we were con- introduced by a common friend he came to my house and said uh, i'm trying to do i'm trying to run a school uh, so that girls uh, have a better opportunity so that they can read and write and um, stitch and sew so these were the only two things and i looked at him because being in the international the aid sector and have having worked with lot of money lot of systems and organization i'm saying that, okay this man okay it's okay so then i said okay i will come to see your work and i go to anup shahar and i see him sitting under a tree and there's one room where 14 girls were sitting and i said oh no this is not my cup of tea i can't help him out because this is not even a starter and that too in western up where girls are not even counted so my one of my favorite stories when i went to home of one of the mothers and i said how many kids you have she said five and there were six girls giggling behind standing behind her their mother and giggling so i asked beta why are you giggling they said ma'am mom has only counted the boys she does not even identify us so that was the background that we started working in and then sam being sam he was very persistent he kept he kept uh, coming home and uh, one day i felt that this is god's work so that's how we became a team a notorious team i would say yeah and started doing what we could start um and uh, started learning each day started creating opportunities each day and step by step and today we started with like 45 girls and only 14 remained in the school and today we have 1750 girls in the school itself 1750 that's a huge number so you you've been there associated with the organization right from its nascent stages what you're saying yes so so uh, uh, so what is uh, how is this entire model works because i was going through the website uh, a while ago what i understood is uh, the model is universally or internationally uh, acclaimed while at the same time it is uh, scalable across the country is what i i understood so could you could you give me throw some light on that so today i don't know if anybody uh, probably read hd's editorial it's lying here it is by mm. uh, ms bhandare namita bhandare covid is impacting child marriages so when we started we also started in a area where patriarchy is very large girls get killed at fraction of a second khair panchayat is there casteism is there so it's mind you western up unfortunately if you read 
any newspaper even today all crimes that happen are primarily from bulandshahar so even today when i tell somebody from delhi that or anywhere that okay i'm taking you to bulandshahar he said Are you sure because there was a time that i used to uh, get escorted by a gunman to go to the villages and like lot of things happened that i don't want to sensationalize here no because i'm i'm what i'm sharing is a very happy story so uh, i have two biological kids and i say 1760 daughters of my own so one thing i knew right from the beginning was that we will not have any difference between my biological daughter and my girls as far as possible we will try to have the same uh, same opportunities for my girls so even today when i have mentioned this article about child marriage and that some of the uh, ngos are saying that we should not increase the, i'm going a little out of the way but i want to create a context like we should not go um, we should not increase the age of marriage for girls no. but i'm saying no that's not the issue you should definitely increase the age of marriage because that gives all the ngos and right um, based activist organizations to say rightly that the girl has a choice to marry when she decides to marry not because she's a burden on, on her family so we were also worked in the same scenario and context so when we went to the mothers to say send your daughter to the school she said how will how will i clothe her to send her to school she brings in that 10 rupees home every day because of her work in the field who will bring that 10 rupees and last but not the least was the question what she should do after 12 years of education because as far as i can see there is no opportunity for her except for working in a field and one more question was how will we get her married so we kept thinking then we came up with a model we said we will give her three meals why three meals because um, our school is a long day school it starts at 8 o'clock and finishes at 4:30 so it means some girls start from their home at 6 o'clock and only reach by 6 o'clock at night so when they reach they have to help their mothers also so if she has had enough good sumptuous meal in the school at least she will survive till the next day so that was one thing secondly we said that our girls the day she enters our premises campus she is an innocent she is not a burden which means she is a person stationery her her uniform her shoes everything is taken care of and also 10 rupees are deposited into her account on the basis of her attendance mm -hmm. why we did that was everybody even today talks about um, enrollment but we talked about retention of that girl because retention was not about learning retention was also about her safety and security retention was about ensuring that she is not being sold and retention was about ensuring that she is not getting abused retention was about that she is not getting married as a child bride so that money today unka uh, like this girl has to use for her further studies so i'm very proud to say we have 50 girls working in bangalore itself today oh. and they are all over the world we learned through journey uh, of uh, 20 years it has not been easy but it has been a learning journey of 20 years like any parent we learned a lot so one day uh, one earlier day model was that we used to have half a day academics and half a day embroidery and stitching since year 6 they girls the girls came up to me and uh, they always like my biological kids had competition with my girls and my girls had competition with my biological kids so they said okay if your daughter grows up uh, because she was the same age grows up will you will you ask her to do tailoring and stitching i said no she will do whatever she wants to so they they said then why are you making us do tailoring and stitching why don't we have options so i said beta it is so difficult because one your parents reference to context is only 6 kilometers they will not allow you to go to other places because anushka does not have an opportunity to uh, to give them that kind of professional education and academically also it was challenging but then we said no we will try 
so we tried with two girls and today we have 200 girls who are into all kind of professional courses starting oh. currently and more than 150 girls are in jobs like professionally i'm not talking about the girls who are married and are great homemakers they are equally contributing so this has been uh, so so what i'm saying is like uh, i don't know when i told Pat sam i can't do this to the to the day when i don't know when it became 7 into 24 and a passion and a dream for me equally so this has been a journey of of dreams this has been a journey of commitment this has been a journey of compassion this has been a journey of love and learning constantly and challenging one's own self so 1750 students and uh, uh, three days three times of meals and 8 to 4 30 reducing the tension that is prevailing among the girl child so all these i certainly i think makes up for a good uh, model and uh, so for me uh, uh, there was something uh, i was just uh, talking to one of the uh, senior uh, police inspector police officer i'm sorry rather ips officer he was handling uh, crimes against women and uh, children uh, he was heading the, uh, the particular unit in uh, Tamil Nadu. So some of their initiatives in the recent times during COVID, he also gave the statistics that 4,000, 5,000 cases of domestic violences were reported. So also I went through the WHO, which says violence against women are only through intimate relationships and the domestic violences are uh, causing a lot of trouble to the women. And when they talked about the risk factors or the prevention methods, they said the risk factor is only because of the undereducated or lower levels of education among women. That is one. And then they're saying it is the uh, the reduced employment rate for women. I think you know, having understood all that coming to Pardada Pardadi, I think that is the exact area which with which you are addressing or working on. So could you tell us about the number of villages, number of schools that you've covered, uh, some numbers? So we work in 120 villages. We are reaching to uh, out to the population of more than 150,000 people. Okay. So, uh, but as school, we only run one school. But we, uh, I spoke about school. So we also have uh, three more verticals that we work on. Mm -hmm. Health. And in health, we work a lot on community health. We have mobile healthcare van. We have, we have in the time of COVID, distributed more than 50,000 face masks in the villages third vertical is i village where we create employment and job opportunities for women so uh, we have 200 plus women working under that program and even during the time of covid we have produced uh, 500000 plus face masks and gen generated continue to generate employment for these women and the fourth vertical is what is called as community development where we organize women into self help groups so we have 5000 self help groups and we are reaching out to those women and their families based on savings, uh, rights and entitlements, health, agriculture best practices, dairy best practices, what are the government schemes and everything. So okay. coming back to your question about uh, domestic violence, I do not agree that domestic violence during the time of, of COVID or otherwise also is just amongst the people who are not educated. It is amongst the people who are gender insensitive. That's why they do domestic violence. And it is amongst all communities, all across, right from higher to lower financially or educationally. It is happening everywhere, which is very unfortunate. And it is just, COVID is just an excuse. It is reflection of the kind of society we have. We need to work a lot on gender sensitization. This is one learning we should have. We can't let it be under the carpet. So what we as an organization did during the time of, especially during the, we have been working because our, even our school education or community model is very much uh, based on human rights. So in the school, we have school for half a day where we do academics and half a day what we call is personality development. In that, human rights is one basic part of it. So, um, so I will say like uh, during the time of COVID, each of my girl, each of my community women, each of my team member became that COVID warrior and ensured that their neighbors were safe, they were safe, they had food to eat, there was no abuse, there was no violence. So this was one of the major role that they played. Secondly, we started uh, taking safety attendance. 
at least for the community that we work with so if we could not speak to the person that we were working with for three days we sent our teachers we sent our community members we sent our social workers to ensure that the woman was or the girl was safe and that's the way we were able to intervene into many child marriages we saved them we were able to save many girls from being sold we have been able to i will not say 100 stop 100 percent but we have been able to intervene in the cases where the abuses were extreme unfortunately uh we we are in the district which still, still does not have short stay homes or provision of offline age or anything of that sort so that restricts us to a little uh, bit of uh, reaching out effectively but otherwise uh, I, it has been phenomenal we also have trained because uh, when we I, we also started like like many other organization we told everybody that we were connected with please look out for the people who need support and honestly, I want to tell you, I'm so proud of this fact that each one of my Pardada Padadi family member went beyond calling of their duty. They, they, they took, like they went up to support people who could not walk or who were elderly, picked up food for them on their heads, walked for five to 10 kilometers and delivered the food when there was no food for them. So I can go on and on because I'm... Yeah, yeah, I yeah. yeah, understood. I think so several uh, phenomenal initiatives have been taken during COVID. I understand when the students were given three meals a day when they were in the school, and especially when something, everything else comes to a standstill during COVID, I know how challenging it would be because they have to eat and they have to be, be they need to be fed and they are, they have to adjust themselves to the new normal, understood. So, so you talked about some of the uh, initiatives. How do you campaign for, uh, you know, educating the parents or educating the elders in the family to send the uh, women for the school? Because that is where everything starts. So are there any campaigns you do specifically? So when we started with the school, that was a learning that you can't just educate a girl. For her to be educated, you have to educate the whole family. So the first campaign that we did was toilets. This was done 15 years ago when there was uh, nobody even talking about uh, gender rights and toilets. There was no no movie called Toilet. I don't know how many of you have seen it. So yeah. we built, during that time, we built uh, 200 plus toilets. Why? Because uh, girls said that uh, it, it's very difficult for them to come to school because there is no toilet. So we said we will build this as an initiative, as a reward to the families who were sending their daughters to school. So that was first awareness. Then we gave solar lamps to the homes because during those days there was no electricity. It is only during this government that electricity, electric supply is there. But earlier, there was no hardly any electricity. So it was a cha big challenge for safety and security of the girls. Health-wise also, it was a big challenge because they were using kerosene. So we used to reward the families who were sending their daughters to school. We gave bicycles to all the girls who came to school. But th these are only small incentives. But major incentive was to work and recognize those parents who were brave enough to break the existing norms of the society because mind you all my girls also come from very low caste so to stand up as a low caste person and say that i want to send my daughter to uh, study further in mumbai is not easy it's i'm just talking about it but i know how much of hardship it was it has been even today it is for the parents who take that decision because they get to hear all kind of nonsense. Oh, your daughter will run away. Oh, your daughter will become this. Oh, your daughter will do that. Because the higher caste people can't accept it that a lower caste uh, person or family is getting now emancipated. Like they are coming to the situation where like they, they know about their rights. They Especially they're standing up for the rights of their daughters. Which is like this last in the priority otherwise. So the total my mental shift. Yeah. So we did a lot of mentorship of the parents. I'm just going to give you one more example. So, you know, everybody's talking about digital divide now because schools are closed. So from tomorrow, we are dis uh, distributing tablets to our class 10th and 12th girls to start with. But we are also calling the parents. 
it, we are going to have training session of the parents also about what this box is about. We are going to talk to them about what their daughter will do with this. So that, you know, when you demystify things, things become easier. So I have another example to give. When First Institute, and I'm very thankful to NTTF uh, for uh, having that courage to take our girls. Mr. Raghunath, I'm always will, will be very thankful to him. So when, when we brought uh, the girls to Bangalore, we also brought the parents for consecutively for three years to show them what Bangalore is all about, what does it mean to be sitting in a computer, professionally trained computer institute, what kind of facilities will uh, will the girls have and everything. So, so you have to, you, you just can't work with one element of it. You have to talk about the complete package. So true, when I true. talk about three other verticals along with education, health, uh, I village or I community development, this all is about and everything is connected to each other. So if a daughter is coming to the school, it is her family who is in part of self-help groups. If the daughter is coming to school, she's her family is getting help. So wonderful. I think it is not just about uh, bringing this uh, children to the school, the women folks or girls to the school. You addressed several areas, what we call the root cause, the problems. You identified and you found a solution to it, and uh, I think it is a very methodological, methodol uh, methodical approach is what I think you have followed. So that's what I could understand from what you communicate. And uh, so when we, so when we, what is the current state of women in India, and uh, how do you think is it is impacting? And at the same time, I would like to hear from you. What are all the villages or what are all the states that you have your mark presence? So currently, we are only working in Anup Shahar, Tehsil, which is one of the Tehsils of Bulansha district. Bulansha district has uh, seven Tehsils. So out of that, we are primarily focusing on Anup Shahar and a little bit of work we are doing in the neighboring Tehsils also. Okay. But we work with many NGOs and train them on whatever little we know because uh, this work is very uh, intensive work. So ideally, what we would like is that government should come forward and replicate this model. Okay. We will be happy to help them replicate it. We would like other NGOs to replicate this model. We would like, uh, like say, for example, Azim Premji Foundation, they are saying that they want to have one school in each district. It will, it, it's not difficult to run a Padada Padadi kind of a school because it's not just a school. It's a whole rural development model. Absolutely. So that's what we want because we are a, we are still a very small organization. So we want to make our model better and better every day. We are still not there where we should be. But definitely we want to support anybody who wants to uh, take any help from us uh, through our experience of being in this sector for 20 years now. Okay. okay. Uh, you also provide higher education support? Uh, yes. at the uh, yeah could you, so, could you could you elaborate on the higher education and uh, employment yeah so we have uh, in the meantime sorry to interrupt you uh, dean sir has joined and welcome sir hi dean so uh, we have uh, so we don't as i was mentioning earlier also after class 12 say for example there were 33 girls who passed out this batch each and every girl will be going for higher studies with support from Pardada Pardadi. But till class 12, whatever we do, it is free. We spend 35,000 rupees, 35,500 rupees per year on the girl as of today. But when she comes to college, we tell her, we will, we will organize loan for you, but it is a loan, which I have to be, I have to tell you very proudly that all my girls return back. 100%, there's not even one defender. So uh, my girls have been uh, graduates of yoga, entity F I just mentioned. We have many girls who are into nursing. Two of my girls are studying in uh, New Jersey City University to become uh, healthcare practitioners. So uh, hotel management and many of the girls are now into engineering as well. And we have a lot of girls in Banastali doing bee pharma, other uh, other kind of like 
all courses that we encourage our girls to go for are professional courses and when they become the when they become economically empowered it helps them a lot to become socially empowered as well and the whole dynamics in the family changes because she is the same girl that everybody used to say dictate terms now she is the one who takes right decisions for her family and especially for her mother and they have done such amazing work in the community they have become such good change makers and change models the same father used to say oh i don't want to send my daughter to school and now she's like doing this my daughter's in this uh, company and she's earning so much and she supports us and now we have a pakka house so you you made the parents feel proud about their daughters yeah <laughs> that's what Very you good. want you want every parent every member of the society to be proud of their daughters and i said it is a calling recognize their contributions which is most important yeah true true i said it is a calling higher purpose of mr sam yes so so tell us about uh, the uh, success stories of some students you know uh, maybe you you were telling me broad uh, you were describing that but specifically if you could uh, add one or two stories uh, that you are so proud of okay so i will talk about uh, our first graduate asha so asha was one of the first 14 who graduated so she went to us so when she was going to us first thing she asked me how will i fit into that aeroplane it is so small <laughs> and it was i'm talking about somewhere around uh, four, 13 years ago so and then when she was in us she saw what happens in us she saw that uh, girls choose their own uh, part life partners they decide to marry at the age that they want to and they also do not consult a, a religious holy man or religious man for date pandit said like they don't go to the pandit okay so these four things she learned so she came back she was engaged to be married to a boy when she was 4 years old first thing she told her father i want to meet that boy okay which was which was unheard of in that anywhere in that community so they went she said i don't i don't think that uh, he will be my right he can be my right okay. partner so i want to break the engagement so can you imagine what happened the whole no. village came up to the school to say okay. that he spoiled her by sending her to america and only this girl because of backing of her dada for dadi and her mother's support stood by it she is finally very happily married and mother of two kids and she and her husband both are social workers of the school today oh okay and second thing she did she said i don't want to i don't want priest to take out my wedding day she said she asked me why does everybody marry on a sunday in america i said well because it's an off day and also prices are much cheaper for the banquet halls or the marriage places guess what she also chose to marry on a sunday okay oh. so what i'm like these are very small things it, they might sound like small things for people like us but she was setting new norms similarly uh, i can tell you another story of a girl who was to be married as a child bride she because of the human rights they all come and tell us like they know like they can report so she came in she was from a muslim family very poor family so when the family was uh, starving of hunger nobody came so when we reported this case it was covered last year by all the national dailies and everything so when 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 we intervened so all clergy came to school and spoke to me you are not doing a right thing benji you know we can okay. I said, like we'll talk about killing later first. Let's save this girl. And uh, good news is that that girl is happy, continuing her education. So I can go on and on with these stories because each girl, each woman, each mother is a case story in their themselves because they all have, like whether it is a woman from self help group. or a mother of a woman a girl who's uh, went for further studies 
or is or who is 26 years old and saying okay i still don't have 2 lakh rupees in my account i don't have to marry now they all are change makers so very interesting stories so so when you when you do such activities you should also uh, elevate the uh, the the uh, poverty stricken families in this uh, the community so when the girls go to school to ensure that the education is continued you offer them uh, three day three times a meal and all that several activities are there how do you ensure that the parents extend a continued uh, support are there any uh, initiatives or activities that are done to increase the livelihood uh, or the enhance the livelihood of the families so what happens is that uh, we have 5000 uh, women 5000 plus women today who are associated with our community development program so one thing that uh, like uh, in in places like anoop shahar it is still the same story where if you need a loan banks do not give you loan there are no other organizations working so they don't have a concept of self help groups like in south india like it's such a uh, successful model so we were the one who 6 years ago introduced that model of self help groups so now one thing that is happening is that they don't have to go to money lenders they have their own money that they can borrow and they now slowly and gradually very slowly subtly uh, banks are coming forward but uh, otherwise banks were also not giving them loan so one thing that's happening is that it has a, had a huge impact in terms of where they were like when they were borrowing from outside they were paying 60% up to 60% interest on borrowing now they don't have to do that and what like it's only 24% and that also they they it is amongst the group so so that income as an answer to that then we have done a lot of work on agriculture best practices dairy best practices so lot of uh, work has been done around it and it has enhanced the livelihoods of the family one more thing that has happened through all this is uh, so one day i asked one woman how your life has changed after joining the self help group she said earlier i was like a broom which was kept in the courtyard and today i am equally an important member of the family and i'm consulted for our decisions so it's not about uh, economic change it is a change in the attitude it is a change in the uh, in her pride as a human being which is very important yeah a boost to their self esteem yeah and the attitude like the whole whole change in the in the society's attitude towards a woman yeah so which is very important so 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 when it comes to support now when you support a large community of girls and uh, women and their families what is the support that pardada pardadi gets from the government and from the private organizations uh, what 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 is that impetus that you get so the only support we need from government is that they should not bother us too much <laughs> <laughs> so many assessments is it We, we are very honest organization and very grassroots based organization but working as grassroots organization also um, there are lot of government norms that you have to follow so we don't take any financial support from government institutions we each and every penny that uh, the organization today spends is raised through other fundraising sources because um, i'm not criticizing up government but what i'm saying is like many in many ways that public private partnership model has still not come it's just they are just talking about it at the moment so uh, so that is one issue secondly uh, we are so so much focused on the work that we do that finding time to um, go up to government in many different forms is not what we want to do but we are very happy to help and support in any ways that we can in ensuring that the uh, if government seeks and support her so that is what uh, our base has been but we have have we, we i will say padada uh, padadi is a story of a family and uh, we have a very large base of the family say for example dean dean uh, is equally a very important board member 
and um, and also part of the family so he contributes in many ways but similarly we have lot of other contributors individuals uh, cha uh, large charities small charities corporate sector who have been supporting us plus uh, we have um, uh, three chapters in uh, different countries so we raise uh, our support from that we will be very happy to partner with government there's like it's not that we are in denial that we don't want to work with government it is only that it has to be in such a way that uh, it is true partnership so yeah and you need to complement each other yeah it complements each other and also it should be it, it the, part, the whole uh, model should be such that it should be for the larger good correct and it should be very impactful yeah, yeah. yeah. it is widely said government cannot do everything and uh, these ngos and certain private organizations will have to come forward to you know develop the society is what uh, i have been told and i have been reading so coming to the positive aspects uh, how many uh, what are the you know positive uh, numbers you know for example how many students have been enrolled year on year how many go for higher education from that and uh, so so how do you manage the dropouts could you give me some numbers the statistics yeah so so far uh, we have three, we have uh, had 3000 plus students who have passed like gone through the process of padada padadi like including these 1750 our dropouts were much higher i will say till 8 years ago and we were a small organization at that time but uh, now our dropouts are not even 2% of the total and that too also because we take um, admissions of uh, family ch girls of the margin uh, like the people who migrate so but uh, they have to migrate because that's a, how they live so but we have taken a stand and call that we will not refuse uh, admissions to those girls as well so that two percent is primarily because of that or one odd situation where like a family situation changes or something otherwise we as i was telling you like uh, we closely monitor each and every daughter of us each and every with members of us uh, it's a very close association with them uh, as i was mentioning earlier like during the time of covid we have also started safety attendance similarly as i was saying sharing about this 10 rupees thing so girls know it they are very smart so every 6 months they are given their accounts to see how much money do they have so then they compare with each other so, okay why do you have 5 rupees more and i have 5 rupees less so that also teaches them financial management so when they yeah. learn from each other like you are not supposed to take unnecessary uh, leave from the school and uh, you have to follow certain norms of the school so that uh, you get this money yeah. it's not about money it is instilling that professionalism so i think ours is the only school where we don't have summer or winter vacations okay. so we we allow the girls to choose 24 days off on their own so this off because see winter and summer vacation is a very british concept they needed summer and winter vacation my farming community does not need summer and winter vacation they need holidays when it is harvest season or mother is sick or some relative has come or it is a wedding time so that's where we make them choose but then that 10 rupees is like it will be deposited in her account for 24 days but if she takes any extra day then it is deducted also so these are like it's it's what we're trying to do is build that concept of uh, responsibility build that concept of professionalism in her so that when she goes into the larger world she knows what does it mean to be a disciplined and uh, responsible citizen So what is what is what is the background of the parents and are they all belong to the same uh, or, or very common profession or very common trade vocation i'm talking about the parents of those girls so 70 70 plus percent of the population of uh, the people that we work with are marginal laborers or landless farm, like farmers they are farmers. basically laborers and uh, 10 plus percent uh, of my school girls like uh, i will say like the family members are migrant but uh, when we work in the villages there's a large population of uh, families whose uh, family members are migrant laborers as well so i am what i'm saying is they are the 
like they're the lowest economic strata that we work for. Okay, there's a question which has come up. I think uh, a gentleman has joined a little late. What other campaigns do you run in the villages to increase the enrollment? I think we just discussed about it. Yeah. Maybe Rakupati, I'll answer it in the chat. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, moving on. Uh, the next thing is, so there has been a couple of organizations that you mentioned as we were discussing, NTTF, and uh, I, I, I am sure that uh, NSDC, you are also enrolled with or uh, collaborated with NSDC and all that. So what is the kind of occasional training programs offered to the, the students? So we don't offer any vocational programs ourselves, but what we do is we train them uh, during the time of their schooling in career counseling, exposure to the industry, uh, mentorship, so all that we do. And once they pass out from the school, they uh, then we, depending on uh, her background, her interest and everything, we match them with the program. Of course, they have to appear in the competitive test. So if they clear that test, they get into those. But the only program which we have been running um, as a vocational program is where we have partnered again with NTTF. It is the NTTF uh, partnership program. It's a six months program for the girls who can't go outside Anup Shahar for during for the training. So it's a six months training program in which they are trained on computer software and hardware. And then after that, they are placed in jobs. Currently, we have a small number, but our vision is that uh, we want to increase and enhance this number to 200 plus. We are also looking for some more effective partnerships of this kind, say for an allied health field. But uh, we ourselves uh, don't, at present, don't feel very competent to handle it ourselves. We would like to do it in partnership with other organizations. If there are any programs where like... Uh, women who are uh, not very literate and if there can be some some work home-based work which can be done for them we will be happy to help organize that also so there can be a lot of partnership which which can be uh, done and uh, but for that we need a lot of people who can uh, handhold us who can mentor us and who can be who would love to be part of this journey of change so you you, you mentioned about mentoring so what, what gives that energy for you all to work together? I think uh, uh, community outreach programs, you talked about the campaigns, you talked about various initiatives and activities. So it all needs higher level of energy, commitment. You also mentioned that rightly. So how do you organize yourself and what kind of meetings or conversations that you will have at the top level so that you, know, you will have all these running at the bottom? Uh, unfortunately, school is not running these days. But uh, if you if anybody who comes to that school will know the answer. So it is that joy and that smile on the face of that girl is what makes the life. <laughs> and it is that confidence that that woman of that self-help group oozes with today is what makes your life. You don't need anything else. So that is what is the prime reason for, I think, the entire Padada Padadi family to be so hopeful. That's why even our COVID campaign is sustaining hopes. So we are always very hopeful that things will work. And we also uh, don't get disheartened with little hiccups here or there because those are learnings. We see those as opportunities. So when you, and also third thing, which is very important is that, as which I mentioned earlier, when you work, you have to work with the commitment that there's no difference between my girls and my biological kids. When you do that, and then when, then you try to deliver, it is a little difficult, but that is what the driving force is. So that's great. So what, what are the challenges faced by Pardada Pardadi now? Don't tell me it is so <laughs> I, <ready. laughs> I don't like to use the word challenges. I will say we have had a lot of learnings during this time. A lot of learnings. One learning we have had is that there's a lot of training that should be given to the parents also about technology and which we are trying to do now. Uh, unfortunately, one of our girls had to face a lot of issues because she's studying in Banasthali. So I'm telling you about how different it is for my girls now and the parents. So, so this girl, she, like any city girl, was using mobile phone. And of course, talking to boys also. 
so the parents became violent and didn't handle her well and the girl knows her right she called police things became really bad finally she moved out of the house so so this is one learning we have that we need to talk to the parents and tell them that when girls have phone they will use it and and you have to use it like you you also like and also teach girls also like be be patient to your parents that's one thing second thing is that uh, we 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 also learned that it is uh, when when anybody is pushed to the extreme poverty the way covid has like we did a survey of all our families and we found that 60% of the families had to take loan and uh, 30% of the families came to one meal a day so though if when those are the scenarios unfortunately even today despite of our work it is the girl who gets impacted the most that is another learning which we knew but like it came back again uh, so it means that there is some reflection to be done on our strategies in that sense of word also we felt that um, that there's more awareness uh, which need, which is needed for uh, communities to come together to to stand for their rights say for example manrega scheme so uh, we we did survey in 25 villages and found that 35% of the migrants who came back were not enrolled for the job guarantee scheme so we had to work with them to get the job cards done similarly i can go on and on there a lot of work that still is required and also i feel that a stronger need there's a stronger need for forming like say for example a farmer producer company or Uh, these kind of structures, which especially during the time of emergency, can be a pillar uh, to support because a lot of farmers lost their uh, uh, like uh, livelihood because they could yeah. not sell. So there's lot that there's lot I can like there's an endless list of opportunities, but I'm not making an excuse. But I I will say that as an organization, we will try to do whatever we can. but i would like to invite everybody through this forum whoever has expertise in any field or any area even if does not have expertise but can tell a story please come and join us sure sure so when is i'll i'll have one or two uh, the final questions before i you know uh, call it a, a, a day or uh, uh, we've almost come to the close of the event i will allow you to go for the uh, the closing remarks uh, when is pardada pardadi coming to tamil nadu <laughs> any day you invite us okay. you do you have plans to have establish to in other states yeah so we will be happy to come with the team to help hand hold whatever we can do okay we okay need, we need we need committed people to drive it in tamil nadu as well because it can't be it is not something that can be uh, like brought in from one place to another and imposed we 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 have more take it from me i am one okay <laughs> so so uh, any any closing remarks uh, we will almost uh, come to the close of the uh, event uh, if you would like to uh, add anything as a closing remark so first thing i would like to say is that uh, thank you as i said earlier as well being the sunday that you all are here but also like it it is my humble request please go to our website which uh, of course you will be sharing but i can say it is www.education numeral 4 change.org and uh, join us and and please uh, do give us a call or drop a email to say um, how you can guide us support us in any ways that you can it because padada padadi believes that it is not one person's initiative one individuals organization we believe that it is everybody's organization the larger the family the better it is so um when the situation normalizes a bit please do come and visit us and i can guarantee that you will enjoy the boat ride on ganges well said well said thank you so much and you are on the mission of rural development through education employment and empowerment of the girls and the women population 
uh, by uh, Bardada Bardaji today. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, the, the, the main purpose of establishing this Change Agents Foundation and the series two, which is uh, Social Stalwart, is to listen to the stories of NGOs run by uh, socially oriented personalities across the country. And uh, in a way, I feel so satisfying. It is a very fulfilling experience because uh, you mentioned about those children being uh, those students being your children and uh, you are supporting their parents and running so many campaigns supporting and helping them in their vocational uh, uh, education and uh, the number of toilets that has been built meals tension reducing the tension and what not i think you've covered almost a lot of aspects and the activities performed by Pardada Pardadi. And I'm so happy, glad that you uh, gave your time, uh, one hour, a very, very uh, productive and a very quality time. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. And thanks for inviting us to Tamil Nadu. We look forward to that. Thank sure. You. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Thank you.